Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. We have talked an awful lot about comparators and lambdas throughout the course of these videos in the last hundred ish episodes. Mostly just comparators lately, transparent comparators and custom comparators and our associative containers, but lambdas have come up a lot. That there is one part of lambdas that I don't believe I've ever mentioned, and I'm going to demonstrate that now. And I'm going to demonstrate how this can relate to our comparators. Now we have this example that I have mentioned many times, and I I'm showing how it's just not quite natural to use a lambda as a comparator for these reasons. But there's a caveat. There is actually a slightly cleaner way to do this when we're specifically talking about a single lambda as a comparator and we're not talking about necessarily like the transparent comparator kind of thing. So I'm going to talk about that particular feature for a moment and then carry it on to other things. So we've got our lambda. Now the thing that we have not mentioned yet is that lambdas can be converted into function pointers and that has some interesting implications. First of all it has the rule that it must be a non-capturing lambda because a capturing lambda has a lifetime, it has data in it, this is something that cannot be converted into a function pointer, but a non-capturing lambda can be. So we can, and if you don't know the syntax for function pointers you are easily forgiven, this is by far easier to do in C++ 11 kind of world where we can do using declarations that help us uh, reason about the types of function pointers. So if I just want to create my new function pointer type and I want to say using fp equals, this is going to be a function pointer that returns bool and takes our parameters left hand side, right hand side, and so that's, that worked. We must have done something mostly right. And now we can say I've got a object of type fp, that is my function pointer, and set that equal to the comparator. And the compiler is okay with this. It is okay with converting our lambda into a function pointer. So we do have one further option for how we could use our comparator here. Instead of having to take the decal type of the function pointer, we could instead say this is something of type function pointer and it takes our comparator object here. And it's really just that straightforward. We can get rid of our local object and we can even get rid of our object here so we don't have to, you know, question why this comparator object is sitting around. We are, for the sake of this example, still going to leave our using declaration in, but there you go. By using automatic conversion of a f lambda to a function pointer, we can get this. So uh, for whatever it's worth, this generated 290 instructions. And if we go back to our original version here where we have the decal type of the comparator and we're moving it in, then we've got 252 instructions. So it generated, quote, more code somehow, but reasoning about what it actually did, uh, it would be difficult. And the best thing to do, if you're really interested, would be to actually try to benchmark this code. and. So let's go ahead and play with one other implication of using this automatic conversion of a lambda into a function pointer. If you hypothetically wanted to have a vector of operations on ints, and these are going to be operations that take two integers and return a third integer. So we could do something like And from here we can do our but the fact is that this code is heavy and I'm going to pull back in our compiler explorer window and we can see that the compiler has had to generate because of the use of the standard library stood function object all kinds of 
type erasing and wrapping code that wraps around our lambdas that we're passing in. And there's really no way to avoid this. Now, granted, a good standard library implementation is going to have something called a small function optimization, which would eliminate or reduce the need for doing a dynamic allocation of the thing that it is type erased inside the function object. But still, regardless, this is almost certainly more overhead than we actually need it to be because it has to generate all kinds of code for this. And if we truly knew that we were just going to be doing this kind of operation and we could rely on having function pointers instead, then we could do something a little bit more like this and take advantage of the automatic lambda to function pointer conversion that we were just talking about a moment ago. And the compiler generates considerably less code. It might still ultimately be less efficient. This is, again, something that you need to test and play with on your own. But there are other implications for this. When you really know that you have some sort of dynamic operation that you need to capture in some way, but can't afford or don't want to pay the cost of the type erasure of std function, you might be able to use something like this. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.